So this is the tutorial on Eclipse EMF. It's uh, taken from Fogella tutorials, but it's a bit, um, the version on the web is a bit outdated. So I have updated it in, yeah, well, step-by-step, step, uh, a little bit improved every year because the uh, some things they have changed based on the, the versions of the latest versions of Eclipse. So there's some general introduction. Uh, this this mainly stay the same. These links here, they still go to the original tutorials. So if you want to have a look at the original ones, uh, that's, that's also fine. Then, um, yeah, also all these sections, they're linked. So if you need to find it, uh, it's still there, the original sources. Here, this is uh, the installation instructions, but because we already have installed the Eclipse modeling tools, we don't need to do that. And then we can start right with the first exercise, define a new EMF model and create Java code from it. So we start by creating a, uh, an initial project with this name. First, we start Eclipse. Then we need to set a workspace. We can use any directory we like. This is where the newly created files will be stored. And then uh, we can create a new new project and there should be somewhere uh, we're looking for e-core modeling frame eco modeling project uh, so an eco modeling project next this is the project name next the main package here we should set uh, web page oh, web page Next, and then um, the ones that we want to create are a design viewpoint, and that's it. It asks us to change uh, from the current perspective, which is the Java perspective, to the modeling perspective, which is uh, in our interest right now. So we will do that. If we want to change back to another perspective, uh, depending on how it's configured, uh, for me, it's, it's up here. I think that's the default. Uh, Otherwise, you can also go to uh, window and then perspective and set which perspective you want to open from there. So here, this is the initial the modeling perspective. And here, we're going to uh, turn on the property view if we need. This would be window show view uh, properties, but for us, it's already shown. Probably also the default. And then we can create a new class. So the classes, this is here, classifier class. And we're basically creating a class diagram here. We can change the name of the class. Let's call it um, here. The first suggestion would be web. Then we have a web page. So we can also just directly start typing. And we have a, oh, that didn't work. Category and article. So now we want to add attributes. So for the web page, we want to add an attribute of name. We look for uh, here the features tab, there's attribute add it to this class. And then we can also see here uh, the name in, in the details. So the name uh, in this case should also be name and the type should be the string. Yep, it maps to Java, oh, fine. Let's see, yep, maps to uh, the Java string. And then we can add more attributes. So uh, if we want to change the type, you can also go here to the semantic and oh, we need to select the attribute here. And then you can uh, select the type right here as well. Uh, or yeah, directly uh, in, in here, you can also select the type as, as we just did. Okay, then we add a few more um, as, as shown here. They are all of the type E string. So yeah, let's 
quite straightforward. So I'm just going to show the next one because that's a bit more tricky. We're going to add, uh, we want to add an attribute of type calendar, but for this, we first have to create the data type. So to create the data type, um, we drag this one over here. This is a new data type. And then we can set the name to be calendar and the instance class name in this case would be java util calendar so this is quite important to not make any typos here so for example the i don't know english spelling of calendar with e uh, because then you're going to have trouble because the code that you generate will not compile because it tries to find the Java util calendar with E and it's not going to find it. Okay, so here's our new data type. And then uh, we can add a new attribute to article. Uh, we call it created. So here's article, the new attribute. We can call it created. And the data type that we want it to have is our calendar. This one. Okay. Um, yeah. Then the next thing we want to create some relations between the classes. So uh, now I'm I don't have all the uh, all the attributes, but that's not the thing. You can just add them. Now we want to create relations. So if we want to later store the elements from this model, it's very useful if uh, we have them in a composition relation because we, what we can store uh, is then the root node and the root node will store everything else that is composed with it. So that's why we choose here a composition. There's also the normal association, uh, which would be reference or bidirectional reference. But then uh, the storage becomes a bit more tricky. So here we have a composition relation. Um, and then we can set the lower and upper bound. It's already 0 to star. Uh, so if we want to have um, a look at this under eCore, for this element, we see the name is web page, lower bound uh, zero, and then upper bound star. And uh, because it's a composition relation, we need to have this containment uh, selected here. But that's by default when we create this element. Okay, uh, then we can do the same thing for from web page to categories. So web page to categories. Um, and here the names are a little bit changed. So if you want to have it according to the tutorial, you will make it plural. And then um, probably one from category to article. And they're all um, zero to start right now. Now, there are different ways to see this, uh, this diagram. So here we have the, the diagram in, in, in the visual format. Um, but there's also a different representation here in this equal file, uh, where you have it basically in this syntax tree format. Um, now, we're missing a few of the attributes because I didn't create them yet. But you can basically see this is another representation, the web package uh, package contains the classes, uh, web, web page, category, and article. They're all on the same level. And then we have the um, compositions in here where web with web pages uh, goes to, is, is of type web page. And again, you can see the multiplicities here. So the upper bound minus one in the editor, it was a star here in this representation, uh, it's a minus one. Now we can set the, the package. So uh, if we open this gen model here, this has information about 
again, it's, it's a different view. It has information about uh, code generation from the model. And then under properties, there is uh, something of this package here. There's something called a base package, um, an all base package. And here it's this com for Gala uh, EMF web page web page model and, and then we see in the screenshot in the tutorial it's DE. Um, not sure what we want to keep. This is based on the project that we created. So here it's um, later. Yeah, let's just ignore this. So it, it, it will work with both. Uh, you might want to change it or you might want to keep it. Here in the text again, it's com. Um, so let's keep it with com because that's what we have. So let's not change it in this last step here. And that's the creation. Now, yeah, it just add the, the remaining elements of the class diagram. If you want to go back to your class diagram, it's in this ARD entities in the class diagram, web page class diagram. Um, and I think you have to be in the modeling perspective to see this. Otherwise, it's just a normal file. So if you, if you can't see an easy way to open the diagrams, uh, just make sure you go to the modeling perspective. And that's it for this section.